Hi everyone, thanks for joining me once again for another set of true stories from Thailand. Right, I'd just like to say very, very quickly, uh, I've met quite a few viewers out here because obviously it's high season now, it's very, very busy. Guys have been flying out here and quite a few of them have sent me messages saying, look, I've been listening to your stories, watching your channel for a few years now. I'd like to meet you, have a beer, whatever. And I've met quite a few of them and it's been great. So thanks to all those guys. Uh, some of them were very generous and bought me dinner and uh, especially Roy yesterday with his pal. And uh, yeah, it was very, very nice. But also on the other side of the coin, there's quite a few guys that I've been unable to meet because I've just been busy. They've, they've said, look, I've just flown into town. I'm going off to Phuket tomorrow, whatever. Uh, and I just can't meet them because I'm in the middle of editing or I've already got an appointment. So if you're one of those guys, apologies, maybe next time round, right. Okay, let's get into these stories. There's three today. Now I've got a little bit of a confession to make. I have run out of stories again. Uh, I did run out about two months ago and then I started getting more stories come out. But what I've done, I've taken some of the best stories from uh, 2021. Now you might have heard these before, but they are three years old. Back then I had a lot less subscribers than I've got today. So hopefully a lot of you guys haven't yet heard these stories. And for those of you who have, uh, hopefully you'll enjoy them again, or maybe you can wait till we get some new ones next week. Okay. So let's get straight into the first of three today. Hi Peter, I'm a new subscriber to your channel as I, I love a good old car crash story as I too exp experienced a bad breakup with a Thai woman. But I'll leave that story for another time. The story I'm about to tell you is not your typical Patia Bar girl story, but it does have some moral ethics behind it. A little bit about myself. My name is Mac and I'm from South Australia. My father is Chinese and my mother is Thai. They always spoke in English because neither of them spoke each other's language. I was pretty much raised as an Australian country boy as at the time, 1989, there were no other Asian kids at my school. I finished high school in South Australia but attended a university in Canberra as a young adult. That's where I met my Thai friend Sumchai. He was from Chiang Mai and was further in his English studies here as he wanted to speak better English. He was so happy that he met me because I was the only other Asian at the university and I was half Thai. After we got to know each other a little bit more, he was so shocked at how little Thai I spoke and knew next to nothing about my culture. It worked out eventually because some Chai's English improved dramatically and my knowledge of Thailand also improved, or so I thought. Some Chai's English course finished in 2002, so he went back to Thailand. He kept in touch through international phone cards back then. I made him promise that I would come to visit him in Thailand after I finished my studies. In the blink of an eye, it was 2004. I've just graduated and off I went to meet Sumchai in Chiang Mai. Although I'm half Thai, I've never traveled to the land of smiles before. This will be my first trip. Sumchai came to pick me up from Chiang Mai airport. He explained some of the do's and don'ts and told me that I won't get away with everything as a Farang would do because I look like the locals. He took me to his house where I met his mother and sister. To my surprise, they both spoke pretty good English, more fluently than he does. I soon learned that both were English teachers in one of the local universities. Sumchai explained to me what our two-week program was and I was excited to get started. He said, We'll be riding motorcycles through the Mei Hong Son Loop. Some Chai, being a motorcycle enthusiast, had a Harley as well as a few other racing bikes and scooters for me to choose from. I chose to take a Vespa as I'm just a novice rider and Some Chai brought his Harley. At 7am, I woke up, got ready and came downstairs to have breakfast with his mother and his sister. His mother reminded him to make merit when he got to a certain location on our trip. I didn't really understand what she meant at the time, but some Chai said he'll explain it later. We both headed out with our motorcycles, stopping along various sites to take photos or use the restrooms. Three hours into the trip, we stop at a village called Omkoi. He said, we're spending the night in one of the guest houses and we had to go shopping to buy various gifts like blankets, books, t-shirts, chocolates and some toys. I asked why were we buying these items and he replied to make merit. He said we will be making a short trip up the mountain to a poor village to donate all these items to the people living there. He explained to me about Thai traditions on merit which I sort of understood at the time. 
I gave him an extra 5,000 baht to buy more things as I too wanted to make merit. After we bought all the stuff, a pickup truck came to pick us up to go to the mountain. I jump on the back as I've never rode on the back before because it was illegal in Australia. It wasn't as much fun as I expected to, due to it being very rough terrain going up the mountain. My back and my backside were so sore from the ride that it was a huge relief to see that we had arrived at the village. Sunchai had a cheeky smirk on his face as he asked me how my backside felt from the ride up. I smiled and said it was okay. As we arrived, almost every child from the village came to greet us. I was shocked to see how small and skinny and dirty all these kids were. I remember feeling so sorry for them as I looked around the village to see such poor living conditions that these people were living in. Soon after, we were greeted by the village elders. Sumchai and I handed all the blankets and clothes over to them and their people. As for the toys, Sumchai told the kids to line up in single file as I handed dolls to the girls, cars and toy guns to the boys. I was so proud of what I had done as we brought so many smiles into these people's lives. The village elders told us that they will put on a feast for us tonight in the village centre and they will not take no for an answer. Some chai hesitated as he agreed and explained to me what was going on. I was full of enthusiasm as I've only seen these types of celebrations on TV. They roasted a pig over the hot charcoal. My mouth was watering watching the pig go round. Some chai whispered to me and said, look, I know you're hungry because we haven't eaten since noon, but don't eat what they give you because your stomach won't be able to handle the bacteria. Stupid old me didn't take some chai's advice as I bit into the delicious suckling pig and washed it down with some of the homemade white wine made from rice. Some chai pretended to eat the pork throughout the night. I didn't take much notice as I was really enjoying myself. We both got so drunk that we had to stay and sleep in one of the spare huts. In the morning, we both woke up at around 7am, hungover and not really remembering much about the night before. As we packed our bags and came outside, some of the villagers were already outside our hut to see us off. We said our goodbyes and we made our way down the mountain in the pickup truck. Some chai told the driver to stop just outside the village as he showed me these little huts that had a hole in the middle. Under the hole there were buckets. Some chai told me that these are the toilets that the villagers use. As the truck kept driving we drove past a pigsty. Some chai asked me, do you remember those buckets? That's the reason why I didn't want you to eat the pig last night, he explained. They feed the pigs with, their, with the contents of the buckets. Suddenly, my stomach just turned and I threw up all over the side of the truck. I asked him why he didn't tell me. He replied, I did, you idiot. You were so drunk that you ignored me. We didn't speak much as he, we rested in our guest house until the next day. The next day, as we were getting ready to get to our next destination, we didn't speak about what had happened yesterday. We just acted like nothing had happened, which was fine with me because I really didn't want to be reminded about that. We rode for about another two hours and we got to a beautiful village which was a tourist attraction as it had bars, a bus stop, many restaurants, a market, temples and the most beautiful rice fields you'll ever see. As Sumchai was checking us into a guest house, I went alone to see the scenery and took photos of the locals. We picked at a local restaurant that I chose. I picked it because it was clean and the waitress was so beautiful. As we were eating, Sumchai got a phone call from a distant relative nearby. He asked if we would like to come to the bar tonight as he hasn't seen Sumchai in many years. We arrived at the bar at 8pm. We only brought the Vespa as we didn't want to wake the locals. If we were going to be late, we were treated with the nicest hospitality from his staff for the next five hours. We were treated like kings. We stayed until the bar shut at 2am. I was so drunk that I couldn't see properly. Some chai was not too drunk, so we decided to ride the Vespa back to the guest house, which was only 10 minutes away across the rice fields. I jump on the back as we drove along the rice fields. Suddenly, I had to pee. I told Some chai to pull over as I couldn't hold it anymore. Some chai pulled over the side of the rice field, and I ran straight into the field and unzipped my jeans. It was pitch black as there were no lights anywhere. 
Suddenly, some child was screaming at me, but being so drunk I couldn't make out what he was saying, until I was finished. As I walked back to the bike, some child continued screaming at me. I asked him why he was so angry. What was he angry about? He replied, you idiot, all of the places you could have taken at leak, why did you have to do it on the small wooden shrine? Thais have small shrines in their homes for worship. Sometimes they can be found in rice fields, the workplace, most hotels and resorts, or just along the road. It can be used to worship dead relatives or just random ghosts that occupy the area. I didn't know what it was and if I knew or could see it, I wouldn't have done it. Some Chai was so angry and didn't speak to me the whole night. The next day, he was still angry as he only spoke to me when he needed to. This part of the story is where things got a little weird. As we were driving out of the village, some Chai was riding fast as I tried to keep up. Suddenly I felt a strong gust of wind and I lost control of the bike and fell head first into the road. My helmet flew off my head as I landed. Luckily the helmet broke my fall as it came off afterwards. The bike continued to slide off the road and into the rice field. The next thing I knew, I could hear some chai calling my name and asking me if I was okay. The first thing that came out of my mouth as I was laying on the side of the road covered in blood was, is the bike okay? Some chai got a towel from his bike and wiped some of the blood off my face. He asked if I could get up and walk as he wanted to take me to the nearest clinic. When we got to the clinic, the doctor examined me thoroughly. Luckily, I escaped with just minor cuts to the face and scrapes on the body. I went inside the restrooms to clean the blood off my face and as I came out, the doctor, the nurse, the receptionist and some chai were all looking at me like I've just killed someone. He explained to me that what I did last night was unforgivable. That is the reason why this accident occurred. I just rubbished it off and blamed the accident on my lack of experience on a bike and that it could have happened to anyone. Some chai shook his head and just paid for the bill. I hopped back on his bike and we needed to retrieve the Vespa stuck in the rice fields. When we got to the location of the accident, some chai pointed that it wasn't a coincidence that I had the accident there. It was the same location of the shrine that I had peed on last night. He continued saying that I must make things right or bad things won't stop happening. The only problem is he doesn't know how. He said when we get back to Chiang Mai, he will ask his mother about it. When we got back to Chiang Mai, I told some chai that I wanted to stay in a hotel because I didn't want to be bother his family. He dropped me off at a hotel and asked me not to do anything stupid. He will try to get some advice on how to fix our little problem. I rested for a few hours until around 7pm. I logged onto the internet to see what was good in Chiang Mai and decided to head to the night bazaar for some dinner. I called Sum Chai and he said he'll meet me there as he had an appointment with a friend. I got a taxi on the side of the road and he took me straight to my destination. I've never in my life seen so many people in one place at the same time. I was so amazed at the scenery and to be honest, I was a little overwhelmed as I'm a guy from a quiet town. I went into a bar where I saw a lot of farangs and ordered some food and beer as I waited for my friend. A few hours went by and I was getting bored so I called the waitress over to get my check. When the bill arrived, I checked my pockets to get my wallet out and it was nowhere to be seen. The last time I saw it, saw it was when I paid the taxi driver. I must have dropped it in the cab or on the street. Feeling a bit embarrassed, I told the waitress that I had a change of heart and decided to stay for a few more beers and wait for my friend to join me. 20 minutes later, some chai arrived. I told him that I've lost my wallet. With a big sigh, he told me to report it to the police station. When we left the police station, some chai said he had a surprise for me. He took me to a place with a VIP room. Inside the room there was a private bar, a pool table and a huge TV screen. Two minutes later, an older lady came along with 10 or 12 pretty girls. Some chai told me to pick one to sit with. I was so shy as I've never seen anything like this before. I couldn't even stare at the girls' faces, yet alone pick one. Some chai understood the situation and picked two girls to sit with us. They were both beautiful, so I wasn't bothered. The night went by as we drank, played pool and sang. The bar was closing and we had to pay the bill. Some chai asked if I wanted one of them to come back to the hotel with me. I replied, only if she wants to. Some chai went and negoti negotiated something with her and she agreed to come back with me. 
We left the establishment and headed straight to my hotel. Suddenly, a car rammed him from behind. The owner of the vehicle got out and apologised to Sumchai, admitting it was his fault. They exchanged details and both went to their separate ways. Sumchai dropped me off at the front of the lobby. He gave me strict instructions not to wander off by myself the next day until he arrives. The girl was holding my hand as we took the lift to the fifth floor where I was staying. The lift stopped on the first floor. I didn't think anything of it, I just pressed the closed door button again. It stopped on the second floor, no one got in so I pressed the button again. Once again it stopped on the third floor and the door opened. The girl with me started to come closer and closer to me as she held my arm tight. I told her that we will take the stairs back down and talk to the receptionist. I told him that the lifts are stopping on every level without anyone getting in. He came inside the lift with us, pressed level 5. The lift took us all the way up to level 5 without stopping on any of the other floors. I thought it was strange, but it was probably just a coincidence. When we got back to my room, the girl didn't say much. She just sat there and looked around the room. I asked her what was wrong. She said she's getting weird feelings and goosebumps on the back of her neck. She asked me if she could cancel our arrangement as she didn't want to stay one more minute in this room. I didn't want to force her to stay if she didn't want to. She reached in her bag and took out a few thousand baht and placed it on the table. She, she then ran out the door without saying a word. I called Sumchai and told him what happened. He just said, don't worry about it, tomorrow I'm taking you to the temple, he said. The next day, at 10am, Sumchai arrived to pick me up. We drove to a temple recommended by his friend. When we got there, he told me not to say anything and just do what he does. So I followed the ritual as best as I could without Sumchai explaining anything to the monk. The monk said that he's really angry at your friend for his arrogance. I was baffled as the monk and Sumchai tried their best to explain the situation to me. Apparently, I have a spirit following me around which was causing all this bad luck. The only way to fix it is to bathe in holy water and to go back to the shrine with an offering and apologise for my mistake. I didn't want this to ruin my holiday so I agreed to follow these steps even though I didn't really believe it. After I bathed in holy water we drove for three hours back to the shrine where it all started. Some chai placed some fruit sweets and some red drink on the bottom of the shrine. He burnt some incenses for us and told me to repeat after him and place the incense on the ground next to the food. The rest of my holiday went by very quickly without any problems and I didn't return, I returned safely home. I learned an important lesson that trip. Not only should I respect Thai laws, but to also respect Thai beliefs and customs. I haven't seen Sumchai in five years. I can't wait to visit him again. I know it was a long story and a little far-fetched for your viewers, but every word is true. Thanks for everyone for listening. Well, I don't know if it was true or exaggerated or a little far-fetched. As uh, the writer said, you'll have to make your own minds up. But one thing I will tell you, if you come out to Thailand, if you haven't been here before, these little spirit houses, they look like little houses, uh, literally like little Thai houses, and they're everywhere. Even where, even if you go to Nana Plaza or Soy Cowboy, uh, places you wouldn't expect religion to sh pop its head, as it were. They are, they're everywhere, and the Thais uh, deeply... Um, you know, they're very, very religious, Buddhism, so always take it seriously, don't make fun, don't touch anything on these shrines, and just uh, be very, very respectful. Okay, we're going to jump into story number two. Firstly, a little bit about myself, so I can paint the backdrop for this story. I'm an average-looking American guy in my mid-30s, and was on my first trip to Thailand. I had heard stories of Pattaya from a friend, and as a gift to myself, I decided to finally go and book my trip right after New Year. I flew into Bangkok and was going to be in Thailand for a little over two weeks. After a few nights of visiting the Gogol bars in Nana Plaza, I headed down to Pattaya. What a culture shock. I was not used to the handsome man cat calls every 20 feet. I really thought t that type of attention would be enjoyable, but truthfully, I now see why women find this off-putting. However, after a few more days, a person can adapt to their surroundings. I had been hitting the go-go bars on Walker Street every night, and I am bar finding a different girl each night to drink and play pool with. After about a week, I go into a bar, and I have never, I've never been to this bar, which I found is quite famous on Walker Street. If you do a little research, you will know what go-go bar I'm referring to. 
This goggle bar is unlike any other I went to here in the States. All clubs have a keep your hands to yourself type of rule regarding the dancers here. This place, to put it mildly, had no such rule. If I was uncomfortable with catcalls, you can imagine what I seen there I found rather disturbing. I left after about only 20 minutes, but as I said, you get used to it just about everything in time. So a couple of days later, I thought, why not check out that place again? Which brings me to the main character of the story. I never did get her name, but we'll just call her Hot Mess, or M for short. I called her Hot Mess because out of all the girls in the bar, 70 or 100, she was a superstar. She was also a bubbly mess, so hot mess. Bleach blonde hair, five foot tall and a perfect figure. I called her over and bought her a drink. Now I drink margaritas normally, but trying to find a place that serves you margaritas in Thailand is like trying to find water in a desert. You can find it, but you really must search. So I must resort to shorts, shots of tequila also, as this is relevant to the story, I have a rather high tolerance for alcohol and if I don't keep drinking once I've started, when I'm out, I will quickly, very quickly, lose my mood. This isn't really a problem because I can hold my alcohol and unless you really know me, most people can't tell when I'm drunk. So we have a few shots and I ask her to leave the bar with me. The most enjoyable part of the evening for me is partying and playing pool in the bars on Beach Road. M tells me she cannot keep me company for more than a couple of hours or so. I have a pretty good buzz and I really want to see her. So I take her for a couple of hours and a good time and a good time was had by both of us. Fast forward two days and I really want to see her again. I go back to her bar but she says she's with another guy. I decide to have a few drinks and hand back and see how the situation develops. After a little while he leaves and she comes and sits next to me. I buy another round and tell her I want to take her out again, but this time I want to take her out for the whole evening, not just a couple of hours. She again says she only goes out for a few hours. M told me that if I paid two bar fines, she could keep me company for the entire evening, which worked for me. Now this part is key to the story. No money has changed hands between M and I. So this is where our evening started. She said she had not eaten yet and asked if she could eat some noodles that the manager had brought for the girls and were in the girls changing rooms. She tells me that after we eat we can, ha we can leave together. I wanted to enjoy M's company and hadn't eaten yet myself so I offered to take her to a seafood restaurant on the waterfront. I thought it was certainly better than a bowl of noodles from some seller's cart on the street. M said no it's fine the noodles will be okay and will save you money. I said that I really didn't mind and would be happy to take her out for a good meal. She again declined and said, OK, I'll wait. For, you wait for me. About 20 minutes later, she comes out all smiles and is ready to go. She looks totally different, fully dressed, stunning, actually. We go to another go, -go bar together as she doesn't play pool, but she wants to drink. That suits me just fine. We have a few shots and rank the girls on stage by hotness. We are both laughing and having a good time. I tell her she is prettier than all of them, to which she is positively beaming. What girl does it like flattery? After an hour or so, she says she wants to take me to another bar her friends work at. I knew immediately this is going to be a costly night if I decide to go. But at this point, I have a good buzz, so I don't really care about the money. So we head off to the next bar. She sees her friend and around four to five girls huddle around us. She asks for me to buy them all a ladies drink, which I happily oblige. We all talk and laugh for around 20 minutes and after each girl finishes her drink, they thank me and leave me and M alone. I thought that was extremely nice that none of them, including M, did not try and pressure me for more ladies drinks and were ha happy with just the one. M is also happy as she gained face for bringing me as a customer to buy drinks for all of her friends. So about 10 minutes later we change go-go's again and are laughing and holding hands on the way. As this next go-go bar we both really enjoy the music and have a couple more shots. As I'm enjoying the view I notice so is M. It is at this point I'm starting to think I'm not only the one of us that likes girls. But the night is getting costly enough already without thinking such things. So I pay the bill and we leave. As we are leaving, I realise I am at the perfect level of drunk. Not too much that I will be sick, but enough that I will be able to maintain my buzz 
for the rest of the night without having to do any more shots. Emma is also not too drunk as she is in great spirits as we have been laughing and joking all night and I made her look good in front of her friends. I thought what a perfect time to end the evening and go back to my hotel. I'm also keenly aware that good vibes can quickly turn to bad when someone's been drinking, so why ruin the evening when so far it's been great? I was now hungry and wanted to take M to the restaurant on the waterfront. Against my better judgement, I asked her if she would like to go and she happily said yes. So after a short walk, we arrive and are seated. We have a chance to look over the menu and gave the waitress our orders. As we are awaiting for our food, it was around this time that I notice her mood begins to change. She's getting a little short-tempered and I could tell the vibe wasn't the same. I had a feeling this might happen if we continued the night, but it was still just a vibe and I held out hope her mood would again change and we will be all smiles again. Unfortunately, this did not happen. I am soon finding that anything I say is taken negatively. This goes on for around 10 minutes or so and I'm quickly seeing any hopes of a fun night evaporating before my eyes. As a last minute idea I attempt to spin something she said into a funny joke to make her laugh. She just stares at me and says don't say that. She stays quiet for a few more seconds as I try to think of what else I could do to lighten the mood. Then she says why you no let me eat? I asked her what? I didn't understand what she was referring to. She says, at the beginning of the night, why you not let me eat noodles? I told her I was trying to be nice and wanted to take her to a nice meal. She said, I was a bad man for not wanting her to eat. I sat there for a few seconds not knowing what to say. Then she broke the silence and said she didn't want to stay with me. Well, that was fine with me. There was no salvage in the night and it's no fun being with someone that doesn't want to be there. So I told her I understand and I wished her a good night. She sat there for a few seconds, then reached in her purse and pulled out 3,000 baht and handed it to me. Then she got up and left. I looked down at the money and then back up at her walking away, not knowing what was going on. Apparently, neither the staff, neither did the staff, as our server and another server were right next to the table with our food, watching this slow motion car wreck play out. I just looked at them and shrugged my shoulders. What could I say? Now, I'm only pay, I've only paid 1,000 baht to the bar. I hadn't paid Em any money, so why has she given me 3,000 baht? I have no idea. She was with me the entire night, so she's seen what I paid to the bar. I don't know if I'm the only one in Patia, but if not, I am a part of a select few that could say at the end of the night, after a bar find and a go-go dancer, the go-go dancer actually paid for everything. Not bad for an average looking guy first trip to Thailand. Looking back on it, I can see it was funny, but at the time, I felt like an idiot. What kind of jerk do you have to be for a go-go dancer to pay you to leave? So I finished my food and was going to call it a night. I had been royally rejected by a go-go dancer and my ego was on the floor. But then it hit me. How bad could the night get? It had to be uphill from there, right? So I went out and met another girl I had previously met and bar find her with M's money. So a story with a happy ending, but I still don't know why M was so upset with me. You, you can only guess, can't you? My best guess is that, you know, she'd been out drinking. She was having a good time. She planned out the evening. She was going to stay with this guy for a few hours. But she's, out, she's obviously thought of something else, something she'd like to do. Maybe the alcohol's affected her and she's thought, okay, I don't want to go back with this guy. I want to go somewhere else. And maybe that was so important that she, that's the reason why she put the money on the table. Maybe she gave him the money because she didn't want him to go back to the go-go bar and complain that she left because they would look down quite fiercely on that. Uh, as I say, we can only guess. Right, okay. We're going to go into our third story. Ah, before we go into the third story, uh, he just reminded me of a story. I've got a lot of stories from living in Thailand a lot of years and visiting. And when I tell these stories to some viewers I meet, they say, why don't you make a video and just list out all these funny stories that happened to you? And I will one day. It's just having the time to jot them down because you remember something, but then you think, oh, what else happened? It's hard. But this seafood uh, restaurant he's telling me, I had an experience. I'll just tell you very quickly. You can skip to the next story if it's not for you. So I went out with a bunch of people to a seafood restaurant on Walking Street. I won't name it uh, for obvious reasons, but we ordered a, well, I ordered a lobster because lobster is not the sort of thing I would eat in the 
the UK. You know, it's just so expensive and not, not available like it is in Thailand. And it was lobster on the menu. You know the description, a full lobster that I was going to share with a friend. Anyway, cut through the chase. We got this lobster on the table. And after looking at it carefully, it was what they call a dressed lobster. So obviously a fresh lobster would be cooked. You crack it open and the internal, the meat of the lobster would be all fresh and together and you'd have to separate it. This was actually bits and pieces that they'd stuffed into the shell. In the UK, we call it a, a, a um, stuffed crab, actually. is We don't have lobster. But when you go to the seaside and you order crabs, uh, sometimes they stuff them with bits and pieces. It's called dressed crab. And it was the same thing. It was dressed lobster. They denied it. Uh, we couldn't get our money back. So it's just another one of these scams that you come across here. So if you ever order lobster, ask them, is it bits and pieces or is it a full one? Right. Okay. Now we're going into the third story. This is a very, very short story. I thought I'd just tag it onto the other two because we're already over 30 minutes in and uh, let's just get straight into it. I came back to Thailand via the Phuket sandbox on July the 17th and stayed in Phuket up until now because it simply made no sense to move to a dark red zone with harsh restrictions and a nine o'clock curfew. I had chatted a couple of times with a girl called Nim and she said that she was keen to meet me when I made it to Bangkok. September 15, I flew from Phuket to Bangkok and Nim got off work at 5pm. She has a job at bank. She came to my hotel at 7pm. We went out to dinner and then went back and she treated me to the best aerobics that I think that I've ever had in my life. We, we repeated it the next time except she said that she didn't need dinner. Neither of us liked to eat at night. Again, the best aerobics and a round two in the wee hours. Friday, we took the day off from each other, but had a plan to spend Saturday at Icom Siam shopping mall. The more times that we spent together, the more I realised that I really do not want to continue seeing Nim. She was still a pretty woman, not a reference to the movie, but I had gained a kilo or so and seemed to have aged more. I know that at this point, I, might, I may sound like a jerk, but I know how I am, and I know at some point I'm going to want someone else. At Icon Siam, while having noodles, I had a conversation with him that went something like this. I don't want to be like one of those guys who have broken your heart. I'm not going to stay in Bangkok. I want to live in Pattaya, so I'm not going to make you my girlfriend. I really like you and want to keep seeing you. I hope that we can stay friends and see each other when I'm here or if you visit Pattaya. She agreed and seemed happy that I had the conversation with her and tried to keep things honest. At 2 p.m. I sent her home in a taxi and took my own to the hotel. She asked me if she should come to my room. I told her no. I have to meet my American friends later. She seemed disappointed and later sent me a message online which I did not really understand but I think that she could tell that it was the end. As I was actually reading this story, I, I could see the ending come, and I thought, well, there must be a there must be a, a quick ending or something. But it's kind of ended quite abruptly. But uh, no matter. Right, um, I'm going to end as I always do. I'm completely out of stories now. Next week, if I haven't received too many stories in the week, I'm going to go back to 2021 and start reading again. Somebody suggested to me today. They said, well, instead of reading three, four, five stories out in one sitting, as it were, why don't you just read one every Saturday? Then that way, when stories come in, you won't run out. But the problem with that is some stories literally last four minutes five minutes and you know by the time you've made the thumbnail you've done all the seo with the keywords uploaded it to uh, youtube you still have the same setup i still have to put up a green screen and get the microphone plugged in and all the rest of it and you know for a five minute video it's hardly worth it uh, i've been doing videos that last for around 30 35 minutes for the last four years i'm not going to change now uh hopefully i'll get some more stories in guys if you're sitting on a story please send it in i'll change names it'll be completely anonymous nobody will know it's you and you can enjoy listening to your story right here on thailand bound but for now guys that's it as always i'll be back next saturday live streams are every two weeks now not every week the reason for that is i just felt they were getting a little bit monotonous and uh, i'm putting out a lot more videos now by not having to do a live stream every single week it gives me more time to actually go out there and do filming in bangkok all right Thanks for watching. I'll see you all again very, very soon.